The story begins with the introduction of Claire, a young and beautiful woman who works at a hotel owned by her stepmother, Maud. Maud inherited the hotel after Claire's father passed away, and now she owns it with her secret lover, Bernard. One morning, while Claire is out for a run, she's suddenly kidnapped by a mysterious woman and thrown into the trunk of a car. The abductor drives her through a forest and into the countryside. However, their journey takes an unexpected turn when a wild boar appears in front of the car, causing the woman to crash into a tree and be knocked unconscious. This allows Claire to escape the abduction, so she flees blindly into the forest. However, the abductor eventually finds her in the dense woods. Holding a gun to Claire, the mysterious woman blames her attractiveness for this entire situation. Fortunately, just as the woman is about to shoot her, Claire is rescued by a hunter named Pierre. It turns out that Pierre lives in a cottage nearby with his twin brother Francois and Vincent, who's a cello player. The following day, Claire wakes up in an unfamiliar room, partially undressed. Just that moment, Pierre enters the room and confesses to having killed the woman who was pursuing her. Concerned by this, Claire suggests contacting the authorities, but Pierre refuses to do so, and instead, he offers her some fresh clothes before leaving. Later on, Claire explores the house and tries to call Maud, but gets no response. Suddenly, Vincent bursts into the kitchen, searching for his inhaler, and after finding relief and regaining his composure, Vincent introduces himself and guides Claire to the area where he enjoys playing music. Claire is impressed by his musical talent, and Vincent also introduces her to his beloved pet dog. Later that night, Pierre's twin brother, Francois, wakes her up for some reason. He then requests Claire to leave, concerned that her abductors might eventually discover her whereabouts and locate their residence. But filled with anger, Claire firmly declares that Francois lacks the authority to expel her, since he willingly saved her. In response, the man yells at Claire, leading her to slap him in anger. Enraged by this, the man grabs her, but unexpectedly, he kisses her, a gesture which Claire surprisingly accepts without objection. The following day, while the twins head off to work, Claire accompanies Vincent on his visit to a vet. During the visit, she notices the vet, Sam, displaying a subtle fascination towards her. Now, on their way back home, Vincent invites Claire to join him for a drink, which she agrees to. Along the way, they make a brief detour to a bookstore, where she encounters the librarian, Charles, and a local priest, Father Gilbo. Instantly captivated by Claire's beauty, Charles expresses great interest in her and even offers a bow in her presence. Later, as the two enjoy their drinks, Claire and Vincent reminisce about their childhood memories, strengthening their bond. She also confides in him about her mother's passing. Upon returning home, Vincent presents Claire with his violin as a gift. However, they're interrupted by Pierre, who angrily points out that Claire should have kept a low profile, as her presence has become widely known in the town. After a while, Claire decides to confront Pierre and asks if he wants her to leave. Unexpectedly, their interaction takes a passionate turn, leading to an intimate moment between them. Later that night, Claire struggles to fall asleep and she steps out to find Pierre watching TV. She then sits beside him and subtly caresses him, giving him a seductive glance. It doesn't take much persuasion to convince him, and the two make love. To her surprise, the man stutters heavily, revealing that he's not actually Pierre, but his brother Francois. Upon realizing his actions, Claire instantly expresses her disapproval, causing Francois to feel embarrassed for not being honest earlier. Nevertheless, they both burst into laughter, making a pact to keep this encounter a secret between them. The following morning, Claire goes for a jog and unexpectedly meets Father Guilbeault on a motorcycle. They decide to visit a church together, where she opens up about her apparent misdeeds. Claire confesses to being intimately involved with both of the twin brothers and questions if it's morally wrong. However, the priest responds with a smile, quoting, Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Later, Claire visits a local bar and takes on a job as a waitress, realizing she can no longer idle away her time. And when she gets home, she decides to give her stepmother a call. Although the call is answered, the conversation abruptly ends in complete silence. The story takes us back seven days earlier, when Maud observes Claire working from the window. Soon after, her secret lover, Bernard, enters the room, and she confesses that the joy she once experienced with him has disappeared. Later, Bernard returns to the room and calls Claire, inviting her upstairs, but she declines his invitation. So, he leaves her a voicemail, confessing his love for her, unaware that Maud overhears his proposal. Upon hearing this, intense jealousy consumes her. She decides to take drastic measures and hires an assassin to eliminate Claire from the equation. For a few days, Bernard becomes aware of Claire's absence and inquires with Maud about her whereabouts. However, she casually dismisses his concerns, hinting that Claire might be unwell. Suddenly, Maud receives a surprising phone call 
and hears Claire's voice on the other end, but she abruptly ends the call without uttering a single word. Meanwhile, at her workplace, Claire encounters Charles, who introduces her to his son, Clement. She also meets Sam, who reveals that he dreamt about her last night. He then proposes a date, hoping to talk about the dream he had, and Claire accepts. And in the meantime, Maud is seen driving and smoking a cigar. Later that night, Claire and Sam spend time together at a club, dancing and enjoying each other's company. Suddenly, a stranger tries to approach Claire, but Sam intervenes to protect her. However, the stranger still persists in getting close to her, leading Sam to yell and push him away. Just in time, Clement, who also happens to be in the same club, steps in and knocks down the persistent stranger. While driving back home, Claire describes Sam as fragile, but at the same time, she finds herself drawn to him. She then expresses her perception of Sam as a strong man, but still appreciates his vulnerability. In response, Sam immediately stops the car, and they passionately make out. The next morning, Maud finally arrives in the town and finds Claire, who's entirely oblivious to the fact that her stepmother has managed to find her. But before meeting her, Maud heads to the bookstore and encounters Charles. She then asks him for a guidebook of the town and inquires about the latest happenings in town. And in response, he states that he's happy to welcome Maud, yet another stunning lady in the area. Charles further compliments her beauty and mentions another young woman who recently moved to the town. Later, Maud explores the church and meets Father Gilbo. She confesses about her search for her stepdaughter Claire and questions whether he's met her. Moreover, Maud adds that her stepdaughter has run away from home and likely relocated to this place. It's also revealed that the relationship between them strained after the death of Claire's father. Upon hearing this, Gilbo claims to know about Claire and offers to arrange a meeting in the morning to bring the family together. In the meantime, Claire is seen in the company of Charles and Clement during work. She extends her thanks to Clement for helping her and protecting her the previous night. When Claire returns home later, she sits with Pierre and his twin, smoking. And a while later, Claire shows her musical talent by playing the violin she received as a gift. The next morning, during a jog in the beautiful mountains, Claire encounters Clement. She asks him if he's in a relationship, but receives no definitive answer. In the meantime, Claire finds herself getting increasingly attracted to Clement and his shy nature. Surprisingly, he boldly overcomes his shyness and leaps to kiss her. Playfully, Claire tries to push him back, but Clement gets startled and runs away, prompting her to laugh at the situation. Next, while returning from her jog, Claire visits the church to meet the priest. She confesses that she's been intimate with another man, and it seems like there may be another encounter on the horizon. Shortly after, he reunites her with Maud, who explains that she couldn't answer the call due to connection problems. At that moment, Claire recounts everything that's happened to her, while Maud deceitfully presents herself as innocent. Moreover, she pretends to invite her stepdaughter to come home with her, but Claire simply declines the offer. Later, Claire mentions that she needs to leave for work, and Maud offers to give her a ride. During the journey, Maud stops the car and pretends that the car is a flat tire. Then, stopping near the edge of a cliff, she instructs Claire to check the wheel. In a deceitful twist, she contemplates pushing her stepdaughter off a cliff and moves closer to her. However, before she can act, Gilbo arrives on his motorcycle and stops by to offer help, ultimately failing her evil scheme. Meanwhile, Charles approaches Claire, expressing his worry about the recent unpredictable changes in Clement's behaviors. He reveals that his son judges him for being close to her. However, Claire reassures him that she doesn't mind his friendliness. Then, Charles requests her to have a conversation with him since Clement is very attracted to her. Later, right after finishing her shift, Claire surprises Clement with a visit. But instead of discussing what Charles had told her, she brings up the incident from the morning when Clement kissed her. Strangely, she doesn't appear upset or angry. Instead, she tries to seduce him and approaches Clement closely, ultimately kissing him. Afterward, Claire returns to Charles, reassuring him that his son is fine and simply needed to release some pent-up energy. However, Charles tries to make advances towards her, but Claire reminds him to behave appropriately. Initially, Charles asks Claire to punish him, but she refuses to engage in stupidity. However, as he gets too close, Claire starts slapping and hitting him with a cane. And while laughing at the man, she swiftly runs away. While riding her bicycle on the way home, Claire encounters Sam, who offers her a ride. During their conversation, he asks why she didn't call him back after their night together. However, Claire doesn't seem particularly interested in the topic. Soon, after arriving home, they spot Vincent outside, who invites Claire to his room to listen to his music. However, Sam misinterprets this as something else entirely and angrily punches him in the face. Filled with rage, Sam storms out of the house. And a few moments later, Claire and Vincent are seen happily playing musical instruments together. Meanwhile, Maud prepares for a picnic with her stepdaughter, 
and discreetly poisons one of the apples. The next day, the two of them wander near a waterfall and settle comfortably on the lawn. She then callously offers the poisoned fruit to the unsuspecting Claire. But just as she's about to take a bite, she notices Clement emerging from the nearby forest. Intrigued, Claire invites him to join the picnic and hands him an apple. Just then, Maud grabs her hand, claiming to feel uncomfortable with the boy's presence. Now, after her stepmother's disappointing actions, Claire puts the apple aside and follows Clement into the forest. Eventually, they're seen playfully frolicking in the water, ultimately making love in the rain. Later, Maud informs Bernard about Claire's involvement with multiple men for excitement. Although he's skeptical and upset by this news, Maud cunningly asks if he would ever engage in such behavior. During the night, Claire and Charles are seen dancing together at the club. Just then, Sam interrupts and forcefully takes her away. He then expresses his dislike for watching her with other guys, while Claire laughs it off. Then, as she continues dancing, Maud appears to have followed her to the club. A few moments later, Claire approaches Vincent and asks him to dance with her. Although initially hesitant, he eventually gets carried away, and they both dance passionately. Meanwhile, Pierre and Clement, who are also present, simply watch Claire dancing before joining her. On the other hand, Maud orders two glasses of wine and discreetly adds poison to one of them. However, Clement accidentally collides with her, causing the glass to slip from her grasp. Regardless, Maud joins Claire and offers her a drink while dancing with her. She then shakes and pulls Claire vigorously, while making it seem as if they're simply dancing. After a while, Claire loses control and begins to feel dizzy and nauseated. As a result, Maud offers to drive her stepdaughter home. Following this, as they drive by the same cliff, Maud expresses her frustration over her failed love, blaming it all on Claire and her beauty. And with Claire semi-conscious, she seizes this opportunity to open the car door and forcefully pushes her stepdaughter off the cliff from a running car. Then Maud pulls over to ensure that Claire is motionless, confirming the death of her perceived enemy. Afterwards, she then heads to a church and lights a candle, presumably to seek forgiveness for her grave sin. Unfortunately, karma quickly catches up to her as her scarf catches fire from one of the lit candles, leaving Maud to burn alive. Meanwhile, Claire lies motionless in the hospital, but her seven loyal friends come to visit her. Then Pierre and his twin give her a kiss, while Vincent attempts to kiss her, but refrains. Next, Sam breaks down in tears and kisses her hand, while Charles brushes her shoulder and leaves. Finally, Clement kisses her on the cheek, while Father Guilbeault gently pats her forehead. Miraculously, these acts of affection revive Claire, and she wakes up to find all seven men in the hospital room, looking at her with smiles on their faces. The End